Hi, I'm John Ainsley from Doulos. I'm going to describe 10 things you should know about OVM. Number one, OVM stands for Open Verification Methodology. The OVM source code is available under an Apache Open Source license. It's pure system Verilog code, and you can download it from the OVM website, ovmworld.org. Number two, OVM is used for writing test benches, such as you might use with RTL, Verilog, or VHDL code. The primary source code of OVM is System Verilog, but OVM can also be used in multi-language verification environments and allows connection to verification components in System C and D. In fact, there is a System C version of OVM. Number three, OVM allows test bench reuse. This is one of the primary reasons for the existence of OVM and what's special about it. You can reuse OVM verification components with different tests for the same design. You can reuse components across different designs and reuse tests across different designs. Of course, as you'd expect, OVM supports parameterized components, but does so in a very general and flexible way. As well as supporting parameterization in the same sense as Verilog parameters, OVM also allows you to patch existing components in unanticipated ways. And it allows you to generate random structures and random stimulus by reusing existing verification components. Number four. OVM separates tests from the verification environment. The idea is that a verification environment encapsulates a set of verification components that provide a test fixture for the design under test. That same verification environment can then be used with a whole set of different tests, each test exercising the environment in different ways, possibly using a different random configuration of the environment and generating different combinations of stimulus and using that to reach different corner cases in the design of the test. Number five, each OVM verification environment has an expected structure. The idea here is that by having a, a, a standard expected structure for a verification environment, it becomes much easier to reuse verification components between environments and also more productive because as an engineer, you know the expected structure of an environment. The main building block for verification environments is the agent. An agent has a tightly defined structure consisting of a sequencer that generates transactions, a driver that converts those transactions into pin wiggles on the interface to the design under test, and a monitor that inspects to the, the interface to the design under test, and can convert those pin wiggles back to transactions to send up into the, the remainder of the verification environment. You would typically have one agent for each significant interface on the design under test. Number six, OVM makes use of transaction level communication between the components in the verification environment. A verifi comp verification component wishing to initiate communication would instantiate an OVM port and then make a method call, such as get next item in this example, to send a transaction through that port. The port would be bound to an export on another verification component that implements that get next item method. Number seven, OVM has standard elaboration and simulation phases, as you can see listed on this slide. Firstly, during the build phase, all the verification components get instantiated. Then during the connect phase, all ports are bound to exports to form the TLM connections. End of elaboration is called after the connections are hardened and that gives you a chance to inspect the complete verification environment before simulation begins. In the start of simulation callback, you would do things such as opening files. The run phase is when simulation happens, that is processes execute and time passes. And then finally, there are three post-processing phases, phases, extract, check and report, executed in that order. Number eight, 
OVM instantiates components using factories, and that's very flexible. The idea is that instead of instantiating components by name, and thereby instantiating a fixed component, the actual choice of component is deferred until runtime when the component is instantiated using a so-called factory method. The neat thing about factories is that you can override the choice of components instantiated within the factory outside of the component that's actually doing the instantiation. So in this example, our agents by default instantiate a sequencer named MySequencer, but this particular test is calling the setInst override method to change the choice of sequencer instantiated within the agent. So for a particular agent, instead of instantiating my sequencer, alt sequencer is instantiated instead. Number nine, OVM uses configurations to customize verification components in the verification environment. OVM configurations perform parameterization, but that parameterization is a lot more flexi flexible than can be achieved using Verilog parameters. There are many possible uses for configurations. A test can use configurations to set test-specific information within the verification environment. For example, modifying the topology, the dimensions of memories or buses, switching in or out optional features, setting constraints, changing the weighting of stimulus, inserting new sequences, injecting errors, and creating customised monitors or checking within the verification environment. Finally, number 10. Over, OVM has very flexible support for sequences. So starting at the lowest level, a sequencer will generate transactions, which commun it communicates to the driver using transaction level ports and exports. The driver then converts those transactions into pin wiggles on the DUT. Well, a set of transactions can be collected together to form a sequence. And the, the sequence of transactions can be fixed, or it can be randomised and constrained. Sequences themselves can be collected together to form higher level sequences, and that can be done in a number of different ways. So with nested sequences, a higher level sequence simply calls a series of lower level sequences. With virtual sequences, a single virtual sequencer can start sequences on a number of individual sequencers connected to different interfaces on the design and the test. So a virtual sequence can exercise multiple, se multiple interfaces in parallel. Finally, layered sequences permit a complete protocol stack of sequencers to be constructed in the verification environment, mirroring the protocol stack used in the design and the test. Then tests will enumerate the various possible top-level sequences. So, I've described 10 things that you should know about OVM. We also frequently observe at Doulos that software and object-oriented programming skills are critical to the successful use of modelling and verification. And learning object-oriented programming is not easy, particularly for many ver existing Verilog and VHDL users. So we can help you. At Doulos we provide training classes. We can offer training in System Verilog, OVM, and also in Verilog, VHDL, System C, and a range of other EDA language standards. If you want to know more, either about System Verilog, OVM, or about the various training classes we can provide at Doulos, then visit our website, www.doulos.com.